Good morning everybody. I am Lalita. I am your biology teacher for class 10. In this video, we will be learning about excretion in plants. Excretion means it is the elimination of waste products. Excretion is the elimination of waste products. What are waste products? You all must be knowing that there is some metabolism going on inside the cell. Metabolism is the chemical reactions, the building up processes, breaking down processes and all those chemical reactions inside the cell is called metabolism. The main purpose of metabolism is to produce energy for the cell and another main reason for metabolism is to eliminate waste from the cell. So, elimination of waste can be easily understood in animals because animals have specialized units. Animals and human beings also, they have specialized organs or units for elimination of waste products. Example, you have the kidney which uh, eliminates urine as a nitrogenous waste. Now understanding plants is a bit different because plants do not have any specialized structures for elimination. Plants do not have any separate units like excretory system or something like that. They do not have. So we will be seeing how plants eliminate waste. What are the waste that are generated in plants and how the waste is eliminated. This we have to understand. Do plants generate waste actually? Yes, even plants have some metabolism going on inside their cells. So plants also generate some waste products. These waste products are not accumulated much in amount like in animals because metabolism in plants is slow. So the waste elimination is also in a very little amounts at a time, not like how we see in animals and human beings. One type of waste that is generated by the plant is the gaseous wastes. Let us talk about these gaseous wastes. If we have to understand about the gaseous waste, we have to first talk about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the conversion of carbon dioxide and water to give glucose in the presence of sunlight and oxygen is liberated. Oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis is a waste for the plant. Please remember oxygen released during photosynthesis is a waste for the plant. So this oxygen is given out through stomata or lenticels. Let us try to understand what is stomata. Stomata are openings or pores that are present on the lower epidermis of the leaf. Lower epidermis means the underside of the leaf. On the underside of the leaf, there are small openings or pores which are called stomata. These stomata release the oxygen during the daytime that is liberated during photosynthesis. What are lenticels? Lenticels are openings that are present on the stem region or on the bark region. So this is how oxygen is liberated during photosynthesis and it is a waste product of photosynthesis. Next, plants in the dark or plants during night time, they give out carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide given out by the plant during night time 
is a waste product. So these are the gaseous waste that are produced by plants. So carbon dioxide and water are the respiratory waste products for plants that grow in the dark and also for plants which do not possess enough chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green pigment that is present in plants. So for plants which grow in the dark or in the night time and for those which do not have chlorophyll, carbon dioxide and water is a respiratory waste product. Oxygen is a waste product of photosynthesis given out through stomata and lenticels. These are the gaseous waste. Next we will learn about another type of waste which is the liquid waste. Here we will talk about the liquid waste and a process called transpiration and ductation. Two processes are there. One is transpiration and the other one is ductation. So what is transpiration? Removal of excess water in the form of water vapor by the plants is called transpiration. So roots take in water and the water is carried to the aerial parts of the plant. Excess water is given out in the form of water vapor through the leaves. The leaves have openings on the underside which is called stomata. On the underside or on the lower epidermis there are pores called stomata and through the stomata water is released as water vapor. This process is called transpiration. There is one more process called guttation. In the process of guttation, water is removed as water droplets. This happens in plants uh, at the edge of the leaf because at the edge of the leaf where the veins end, there there are openings which are called hydatodes. The openings are called hydatodes. And Water is released there, comes out there as droplets. It may look like dew, morning dew, but it is not dew actually. It is the removal of excess of water and the process is called guttation. The main difference between transpiration and guttation is that transpiration happens during the daytime and guttation happens during the night time. Transpiration is through the stomata. Guttation is through hydatodes, openings on the edges of the leaves where the veins end. Water is given out as water vapor in transpiration and in guttation water is given out as water droplets. So this is the liquid waste that is given out by plants. Next is the solid waste. We have seen about gaseous waste and how they are excreted, eliminated. We have seen about uh, liquid waste, water and water vapor and how they are eliminated. Now there are also solid waste generated in the plant. Solid waste are stored in fruits, leaves and also in the bark, stem region that is the bark. So when the solid waste is accumulated in the leaf, the leaf falls off, becomes heavy and it falls off. Thus, solid waste is eliminated. If it is stored in the fruits, then if the fruit, uh, ripened fruit, it becomes heavy and it falls off. You must have observed the peeling of the bark. Bark gets peeled off because it accumulates waste and thus solid waste is eliminated. Now in fruits, solid waste is stored in the form of raphides. 
Graphites are the solid waste that are stored in fruits. Now next coming to the chemical waste. Certain plants uh, secrete certain chemicals. These chemicals protect the plant from herbivores. How? By giving an unpleasant taste and unpleasant odor to the plant. So that the herbivore will not feed on the plant. And sometimes in some plants the chemical waste may be toxic also which will almost harm the herbivore which is eating the plant. So chemical waste generated by plants may protect the plant from herbivores. Some chemicals generated by some plants they help in attracting insects for pollination. Like giving out a pleasant, a pleasant odor. They bring in insects for pollination. So these are all the chemical waste. Some plants give out chemicals during injury so that the chemical will protect and heal the plant during the injury. And then let us look about a special plant which are leguminous plants. Leguminous plants belong to the family Fabaceae. A family plant in the plant kingdom called family is called Fabaceae. These leguminous plants they have root nodules. Root nodules are small uh, nodular uh, structures you can observe in the picture. Nodular structures that are present on the roots. These root nodules they give out certain chemicals which will attract a certain kind of bacteria called rhizobia. Rhizobia are bacteria which help in nitrogen fixation. So these rhizobia they attract to the root nodule and they have a symbiotic relationship with the plant. In the symbiotic relationship, the bacteria is benefited because it takes some nutrition from the plant and meanwhile the plant is benefited because this bacteria, the rhizobia or specifically the rhizobium, it helps in nitrogen fixation. Nitrogen is very much essential for the plant growth. So rhizobia and the root nodule they have a symbiotic relationship. Symbiosis is a phenomenon where both the plant and the bacteria are benefited. So all this is happening because the root nodule has given out a chemical. So chemical waste is benefiting the plant here. Most of the chemical waste which we have seen earlier also uh, they protect some chemical waste, they protect the plant from herbivores, they protect the plant from injury, they help in pollination by inviting uh, insects with a pleasant odor, okay, and then they help in nitrogen fixation and symbiosis, rhizobium to uh, carry out symbiosis with the root nodule. So please remember at this point that waste generated by the plant or elimination of waste by the plant is waste not always a waste for the plant plant is getting benefited and the gaseous waste well that we saw about these are beneficial for human beings for example the oxygen liberated during photosynthesis is a waste for the plant Waste product that is generated during photosynthesis, but oxygen is very essential for human beings. Next, let us learn about primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. Primary metabolites are the metabolites which are, which are essential for normal growth and development of the plant. Secondary metabolites, they are not involved in the normal functioning of the plant plant. Primary metabolites are carbohydrates, proteins, fats. These are the primary metabolites. Secondary metabolites are the alkaloids, tannins, resins, 
comes all these are secondary metabolites that are given out by the plant so secondary metabolites are the biochemical products or the biochemical waste that is given out by the plant and man has found much use in these secondary metabolites the plants do not have any use so they are excreted out as as waste the gums resin stamens and all that they are given out as waste because plants don't use them but man has found much use in these secondary metabolites let us look at the list of the secondary metabolites and their uses let us look at the secondary metabolites in detail the materials which are not required for normal growth and development they are called the secondary metabolites examples the alkaloids tannins resins gums etc they are all secondary metabolites so first we will learn about what are alkaloids alkaloids are nitrogenous organic by products of metabolism these are actually poisonous and they help in plant protection but they are of use to human beings they are poisonous for the plant but they have some beneficial action on human beings the first one is quinine so quinine is an alkaloid found in the plant cinchona officinalis the plant name is cinchona officinalis the bark of the plant is responsible for giving out this alkaloid so the alkaloid quinine is obtained from bark of cinchona officinalis quinine is used as an anti malarial drug that is it is used in the treatment of malaria the next one is nicotine nicotine is an alkaloid found in the tobacco plant tobacco plant is scientifically nicotiana tobaccum specifically the leaves of the tobacco plant give out this alkaloid nicotine and one of its use is to act as an insecticide insecticide means it kills insects the next one is morphine and cocaine morphine and cocaine are the alkaloids found in the opium plant opium plant is botanically papaver somniferum specifically the fruit is liberating this alkaloid morphine and cocaine fruit of opium plant is responsible for secreting this morphine and cocaine and this is used as painkiller then we have reserpine reserpine is an alkaloid found in and the root or the bark has this reserpine it is present in the root as well as in the bark and it is used as medicine for snake bites the next one is caffeine caffeine is an alkaloid from the coffee plant coffee plant is coffea arabica the seeds of the coffee plant have this caffeine and they act as a stimulant for the central nervous system central nervous system so your brain gets activated your nervous system gets activated once you take this caffeine the next alkaloid is nimbin it is found in azadiracta indica azadiracta indica is the neem plant 
so the part of the plant having this nimbin is the seeds bark and leaves nimbin is present in the seeds barks as well as leaves and it acts as antiseptic so to fight any infection the next one is scopolamine scopolamine is an alkaloid found in datura stramonium so this plant releases scopolamine and the part responsible is the fruit and the flower this alkaloid scopolamine is used as a sedative sedative is to cause sleep next we have pyrethroids pyrethroids are the alkaloids from found in tridax tridax is a plant and the flower of tridax has these pyrethroids which act as insecticides so these are some of the alkaloids that are nitrogenous by products of plants and they are actually waste products that are given out by the eliminated by the plants let us look at tannins tannins are carbon compounds they are usually deep brown in color and they are stored in different parts of the plant these tannins are the secondary metabolites coming out from various parts of the plant and they are used in tanning of leather tanning of leather means processing of leather to make it more uh, to make it available for the leather industry tannins are also used in medicines because of its astringent properties astringent means cleansing properties so tannins are used in tanning of leather and also has medicinal value examples of plants which give out tannins are cassia and acacia these are the two plants which give out tannins next we will talk about resins resins are mostly found in gymnosperms gymnosperms are the non flowering plants of the plant kingdom plant kingdom is broadly classified into angiosperms and gymnosperms all angiosperms are flowering plants and the gymnosperms are non flowering plants so in gymnosperms we find resins and they are given out through certain passages called resin passages resins are used in varnishes varnishes are uh, usually usually used to polish uh, wood and various surfaces they give a nice shine to uh, surfaces so those are used in varnishes example of a plant which will give out resin is the pinus in some plants when the branch is cut a sticky substance oozes out and this sticky substance is called gum now this gum swells by absorbing water and it helps in healing the damaged part of the plant so when the bark or the stem is cut or the branch is cut gum oozes out it is actually helping in healing the plant these gums are of much economic importance for human beings they are of so much economic value they are used as adhesives or binding agents sticking agents and they are also used in medicines they are used in food also the next secondary metabolite is the latex latex is a sticky milky white substance which is secreted by plants this substance is stored in latex cells or latex vessels for example we have the rubber plant rubber plant is 
Hevia brasiliensis. So this plant rubber. There is one more plant called Jatropa. This plant also gives out latex. Latex from Jatropa is used as biofuel. It is the source of biodiesel. Biodiesel because it is coming from a biological source from the plant it is coming. Otherwise we don't find diesel from uh, plants what we use every day. This Latex is the source of biodiesel. We call it biodiesel because it is coming from plants. Let us try to understand the difference between excretion and secretion. Excretion is the elimination, total elimination or removal of materials from the body. Secretion is the movement of a material from one place in the body to another place. So, there is excretion and secretion. They appear to be the same but they are not the same. They appear to be the same because it involves, both involve movement of materials through a particular passage. So, they appear to be the same but they are not the same. Let us try to understand in human beings first. In human beings, excretion means elimination of for example urine sweat the process of urine formation and removal of urine is excretion sweat removal from the pores of the skin is excretion secretion in human beings includes enzymes hormones enzymes say excreted hormones and enzymes are secreted you can take the example of uh, saliva which is coming out from the salivary glands salivary glands is the place where saliva is synthesized saliva has enzymes these enzymes are acting on the food in the mouth so from salivary glands to the mouth not out of the body. It is from salivary glands to the mouth. So, this is called secretion. Saliva is a secretion. Hormones are also secretions because they are synthesized in glands and they are sent to various parts of the body. What about plants? Plants too have excretion and secretion. We learnt so far about excretion in plants. This whole video we have we have got a clear idea about excretion in plants. The gaseous waste and the biochemical waste and the liquid waste etc. And the solid waste in the form of uh, uh, falling off of the leaves, ripened fruits and uh, peeling of the bark. So these are excretions in plants. What about secretions? The latex, resins and gums, these are all actually secretions that occur in the plant body because they are not given out. They are on the plant itself and they are used by the plant. For example, like how we said, uh, when the branch is cut, gums are released and gum is helping in healing the damaged part of the plant. So gum is a secretion.